Okay, everyone, so we're back. So this is Avast Free Antivirus 2015. This is the first thing that you'll see once your installation is fully completed and done. Um, and it, what it's going to basically do is give you a quick tutorial on how it all works. So it says you're protected, which means that it's installed and it's already running if ran its first scan, which is good. Uh, if you click on Get Started, it'll tell you basically what it does, um, quick tips, um, that kind of thing. You can allow and continue and continue and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip this tutorial because I'm going to go ahead and show you basically on uh, myself on what you can do and, and not do with this uh, program. So the first thing which you want to do after you've gone through the tutorial is register your antivirus because it'll bug you until you do. So if you go up to the very top and click on register, it'll give you the option to register. Now Avast, which is the one thing I don't like about Avast is that they do do a lot of advertisements inside their application to have you bump up to the a paid version of Avast. You don't have to click on this or anything like that to get the, the pay uh, to, to get the free version of Avast. The free version of Avast does run and it runs very very well. Um, you just get a few benefits when it comes to going to the paid version uh, compared to the free version. So to go over here, click on select right here, the gray one. It's going to say register my free one year license. Uh, and you basically will type in an email address. It can be any email address that you want, but it does have to be a valid email address. Otherwise, if they need to send you something or say that you need to renew your license, then you know you may not see it if it's in the email address you should never use or if it's in a email address that does not exist. So I'm going to type in this email address. I'll blur it out later. And then you click on register. Now, once you click on register, it's basically going to say um, this is the free version. Uh, you can go ahead and do a trial for the internet security and some other features as well. Um, you don't have to do that because it's not necessarily needed. So you can go ahead and stay with basic protection. And there you go, you're done. Now, you're going to have a one year license with this. So after a year's pass, it's going to basically say, hey, years passed up let's go ahead and re-register you again use register with the same email address or even a different email address and we'll get the free version again no problem no questions asked um, it's gonna ask you if you want to upgrade to the newer versions or paid versions basically uh, you don't necessarily have to do that uh, you could just use the free version continuously until they no longer offer the free version anymore so that is now done. It says you are protected. We have all the shields active and everything is up to date. So it means that your definitions are up to date. Uh, it means that it's going to protect you from the most latest viruses that are out that's inside this uh, definition bank. And also it has active shields on, which means if you already have a virus or if it sees a virus that's on your computer, it's going to actively try to block and quarantine that the virus and even delete it if it is considered a full on virus. So now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and talk about the free antivirus. 2015 Avast interface. Uh, it's very straightforward. I do like how they have it set up. There are certain caveats that I don't like about it, so I'll talk about that in a little bit, but basically I do like the way that it's set up. It's pretty easy to use. So let's go ahead and get started with um, the basics that you're going to see on here. The first thing you're going to see is that you're just going to have four quick toggles uh, or quick actions basically that you can do. Now it's going to have a smart scan, browser cleanup, home network security, and secure line VPN. The secure line VPN and the home network network security, you don't really necessarily have to use these this, um, that often unless your network is just completely unprotected or you know you know a lot about IT and you know you want to go and just check on it. Uh, really, you don't ever have to really worry about these. I would use this just as a diagnostic tool um, to check on the network, just make sure that nothing else is funny about it. But other than that, that is pretty much it. Um, the other things that you won't want to pay attention to are smart scan and browser cleanup. Now with smart scan, I don't even necessarily use smart scan, smart, smart scan that much because it does four things in one that are not necessary all the time. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you it anyway. So let me first go ahead and get started with the smart scan. So what it does is that it scans for viruses and malware, and this is just a regular quick scan basically, uh, which is good. It will scan your whole computer, takes a minute, and then after that, it's going to check for updates of your applications. After that, it's going to then check for your home network security, and then after that. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, then after that, it's going to uh, check for um, your browsers, and then I think finally it'll give you a report on what it found, what needs to be updated, what doesn't. And that's great. You don't have to do that all the time, though. That's the part that's annoying to me. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one because basically it's already done. All right, this is a clean PC. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the overview page here. 
Now, the nice thing about these quick toggle buttons here is that you can actually change these. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the smart scan to just a regular old quick scan. And I'm going to uh, change the secure live VPN to a full system scan because sometimes you just need to run one. And I'm going to change this whole network security since I know my network uh, security is pretty good at my home uh, to the virus chest. Now, this one to me is probably the best quick toggle because it's really hard to navigate to the virus chest on your own without using this quick toggle. And if you go into here, this will actually give you all the quarantine items that it has found uh, on your computer. So whenever you have like a false positive, that's when basically it finds something it thinks is a virus or is a potential virus or has the same name as a virus. It puts it inside the quarantine chest so that way you can access it so that way it won't affect your computer. You can click on this virus chest to see what's in it and then actually open it up and grab something. So I'm going to click on it right now. You're going to see nothing's in there. But basically it'll list out all the different things that it's quarantined and you can click on it to actually open that stuff up and um, unlock that stuff basically um, and say that's a false positive. Uh, so that's nice. I like to have the virus uh, chest open as, uh, as well. And a you know, quick scan, full system scan are what they say. This is a quick scan of uh, the basic startup C drive and that kind of thing, but it doesn't necessarily scan the entire system. Full system scan scans everything. Anything that's basically connected to the board's drive bay, uh, it will scan. Now, it won't scan external drives as in like external USB drives, but it will scan everything else. Okay, so now I've got those uh, uh, features out the way. Let's go ahead and talk about the browser clamp. Now, I do like to keep this one here because this one is very good. So I'm clicking this. And what it'll do is that it'll scan all my browsers that I have installed that it supports. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't tried Opera yet, but it does support Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox. So if you have any bad add-ons or any malware add-ons that are on your browsers, or if you think your browser's hijacked or it's not looking the same or something's happened to it, you can see all these pop-ups whenever you go on the Internet. You want to run this so that way it'll clean up your browser because not some of the times you don't have necessarily a traditional virus or a traditional malware on your computer that's making your internet uh, not run well. You just have a really bad add-on that it, that you install uh, from say uh, a rogue program, uh, and uh, once you use this, it'll actually find those and clean them up for you. So if you click down here, it's going to basically show you all the add-ons I have on my machine that have good ratings. Um, it'll show you all the ones that have bad ratings so that way you can get rid of those but the good rating ones you can also look at them and remove those too and the ones that are in green are, are proven to be good uh, programs uh, so this is what I have on Chrome as you see it shows all the add-ons I have in there this is all the add-ons I have on Internet Explorer and uh, it also showed me Firefox if I have Firefox installed on this machine right now I don't because I don't need three browsers but uh, I will probably install it later on uh, but for uh, Right now, this is just to show you, hey, this is uh, the, what you can see for these add-ons. Now, if you don't like to see these add-ons pop in, especially if it's one that keeps on having a, a false positive, you can choose to ignore it, so that way it won't show up in your list. And then you also have the remove option, which will basically uninstall the add-in for you. It 99% of the time installs, uninstalls the add-in, which is great, but there are a few add-ins that require for you to uninstall them either through the regular uninstall process or they're just so bad or so um, not programmed well that you have to uninstall them through other means and it won't uninstall through here. But most of the time it uninstalls through here, so that's very good. So I'm going to go ahead and put the check back on here um, so we don't have any add-ons that have poor reputations. Okay, so these are the things in my personal opinion that you want to keep track of. Uh, do a quick scan on your machine every once in a while to make sure your machine is clean and safe. Do a full system scan if you see that things are not running well and basically you need to scan your entire machine. And I would do this or at least have it set or scheduled to do this um, once every night or every other night depending on how frequently you get viruses. I'll show you how to set those uh, um, procedures up in just a moment. And um, of course last but not least is the um, virus chest. Not really, actually, this is not last. <laughs> Sorry about that. But this is the virus chest. Uh, so check on that from time to time. Uh, and uh, see if you got anything inside there that is not a virus that you need to go ahead and get out of there. Um, other than that, everything else is you know secondary stuff that you can do later on. So let's go ahead and go to some of the other features that you have on VAST on the left-hand side or left-hand screen here. These are just the quick toggles. Again, you can change these. You can set these to different, different things. But all in all, I have to have these four here set as the main stuff here. So if you go to scan, it's going to bring up all the different scan options that you have. So you can scan for viruses, scan your browsers, just it's basically the browser cleanup. 
scan for outdated software basically it'll scan what software you have on your computer and, and ping the internet to see if you have any updates that you haven't uh, updated for like if it wants to update Google Chrome or say Adobe Reader it'll let you update it through a vast uh, which is nice um, scan for network threats basically it'll scan your network to see if you have any holes in it and scan for performance issues so if your computer's running really slow or if your memory's full it'll scan to see okay what's using up the most memory and give you the option to uh, to go through that stuff uh, you really won't use almost any of these unless you really need to, um, but I'm going to go ahead and choose for scan viruses because inside here you have even more options. Now, you see I've been here before basically, that's when I went to the smart scan. Uh, but basically if you go inside here, you can go to quick scan, full system scan, removal media scan, which is where it'll actually scan uh, an external drive or uh, external flash drive. Uh, select folder to scan, which is basically if you want to scan a certain folder that you know you always have downloads or viruses that can pop into it, and you don't want to scan your entire system just to check that, you can scan a certain folder. Uh, you can set this to say, for instance, your downloads folder or a certain folder that you know is going to be connected to your internet a lot, um, but it's not ne not necessarily needed. Uh, but it's a good feature to have. And boot time scan. So this one right here is a uh, really awesome feature that uh, a lot of people don't necessarily know about and not a lot of antivirus programs other than the VAS have this uh, feature. So if you select the boot time scan and you click start or you go into your settings and schedule it, basically it's going to do a scan before it fully loads into Windows. Now it does load Windows, so don't get, get it twisted if your computer isn't booting into Windows appropriately. That's a Windows installation problem. You'll have to still get that reinstalled or, or fixed. But if you can boot into Windows, but you just have a lot of viruses and a ton of stuff on there that you need to go ahead and scan for, uh, you can use the boot time scan and it will actually scan your entire system before it boots into Windows as well. This is really meant to basically um, cut down on uh, things that start up or that are starting up on your system when it, when it first starts. But it really is good at cleaning stuff that you may not have known was actually on your computer. A lot of registry errors, a lot of folders or, or programs that may have been left from uninstalling a, a virus or uninstalling a program, it'll take that stuff out too. So you do want to do this every once in a while, say once every three months just to check your system. Or if you are to a point where your system is so infected that a VAS or nothing like that, none of the regular scans can help you, do a boot time scan if it'll let you, and that'll most of the time clear it up. I use that all the time to clear up um, uh, machines at my other job. So now we got past that, let's go ahead and go to your toolbox. Now your toolbox is very, very uh, slim because some of this stuff requires for you to have the uh, upgraded um, pro version. So if you want to run uh, a firewall that's made from a VAS and not run the regular Windows firewall, you need to have the pro version. If you want to do a safe zone, you need to have a pro version. If you want to do a sandbox, basically, um, where you can go through your machine and, and, and check on a few things uh, yourself, uh, you can uh, go through the, the pro version. Sorry about that. <laughs> Losing my train of thought there. But you also have the rescue disk and remote assistance. So the rescue disk, which is nice, is this will let you basically create a um, restore point and use this to try to restore your machine if you can get your machine to restore, which is very good. Uh, you also have the remote assistance. Um, really not going to use this unless you have a really select circumstance where you need to remote into your machine, but there are a lot of other remote programs out there for that. So I don't ever use this here, but it's still nice to have. Uh, and you have your secure line VPN, which basically is um, VPN protection. Unless you're a business, you're not really going to be using this uh, that often. So other than that, you're going to have the store. Now, basically, this is if you want to purchase individual parts of a VAS Pro instead of you going into and upgrading all the VAS. Uh, I honestly don't recommend doing any of this stuff. Uh, just keep it free. Uh, maybe download the mobile app if you have an Android device um, that you want to do. Um, but you know, paying for technical support, which is you know, 180 bucks, um, the secure on VPN access uh, where you can enjoy you know um, the VPN stuff. Uh, you know, get a free trial version of that. That's fine, but it's you know, 60 bucks. So <laughs> uh, I wouldn't recommend going into here that often at all. Uh, you go to your account. Now, this is if you actually paid for stuff. You know, you can check your account status to see what's um, going on with it, and also you can confirm uh, and verify your registration, which is nice. Um, and then you're going to have statistics. Now statistics is good to see if your Avast is actually doing anything for you. Um, it's going to give you real-time data, historical data, and component stuff. Unless you're a technician, 
don't worry about it <laughs> okay just gonna throw this out here unless you're a technician this is gonna look like a bunch of gobbledygook so don't don't worry about it other than that though yeah this is your stats and this is and you can also compare them to other people's stats as well and close this out here and settings finally settings and then after this will be done uh, so you can go in here to clear your active protection, turn your active protection on and off. So say if you need to test something, if you're downloading something that you don't want it to necessarily be popped by fast, even though you think it's going to be a false positive, you can turn that stuff off, download it, and then turn it back on later. I really don't recommend turning this off ever unless you have a very, very specific case where you want to, but don't really turn this off if you can help it ever. You also can customize some of this stuff here, but realistically, you don't need to. Um, unless you again have a false positive or something like that, but honestly most of the stuff here you don't have to worry about um, And then you have your updates Now Avast will give you the option to update automatically. It's gonna have a pop-up at the bottom right corner here on the system tray um, But if you say if you missed that or if you just want to check for updates manually you can come out here You can do your updates the biggest thing you want to update is your virus definitions So no matter what version of Avast you have 2013 14 15 Avast 1 2 3 whatever you have keep your virus definitions up to date so that way it'll protect you from viruses that have been created recently you don't necessarily have to uh, upgrade the program for you to stay protected with a vast you can keep a vast 2013 for instance or 2014 if you like the interface or 2015 and you don't want to update to 2016 because maybe it looks too different you can keep your same version and just update your virus definitions uh, you do want to go ahead and update this if you notice that it's out of date um, but it does automatically uh, check for you and will give you the option to update for you if you had the paid version It's gonna do it for you regardless But uh, if you had the free version, it'll give you the option to update it so you can select to update it um, But other than that um, uh, You have to update it manually. So the next one is the program So the program's gonna have a version number release date number and that kind of stuff um, Just click on update to check every once in a while if you don't like your program the way that it is now though you know don't worry <laughs> or sorry if you do like the way your program is now don't worry about it uh, it's not really necessary uh, um, but it does give you the option to update your program so that way you have to go out to the vast websites uninstall and reinstall again which is pretty nice uh, and then you have your details of proxy and proxy settings but don't worry about this stuff because this is uh, basically just you know how are you connected to the internet so that way you can grab your stuff so uh, next thing is your registration, which we've already talked about. It'll basically say if you're registered or not. You want to make sure that you're registered, and it'll show you how many days you have remaining on your free when you're licensed. So use your uh, use this if you think you're about to run out. But other than that, it's not really that important. Um, the next thing is your tools, and basically this is stuff that you have. So you, you know the stuff you could turn on, stuff you could turn off, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, some of the stuff isn't as important as other stuff, but you know really you want to have all this on so that way you don't have to worry about it. Uh, troubleshooting, uh, which is basically for advanced users. I really wouldn't necessarily use this unless you want to. Uh, and then about, which is, just gives you information about Avast. So that is it. This is all the stuff you're going to find on Avast uh, from here. Uh, if you have any questions about Avast or uh, 2015, or if you see that I missed something, please feel free to um, comment on it on uh, the comments down below. Um, as for a review of this product, I'm going to say that this is a very good product. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because. Uh, it does completely clean your machine most of the time. It keeps you protected from viruses most of the time. The free version works phenomenally well. It gives you most of the features that any average person is going to need uh, without using the paid version. And it does have a paid version that works very well to keep you automatically updated and in check and then you get support for it. So uh, it's a very nice program to have. Uh, that said, I do mark down some points on that because it does, as you can see, have advertisements for stuff everywhere. It's trying to get you to buy the, the, the um, professional version of it, which you know isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just pushing out a ton of these little updates saying that you need to update it uh, when you really don't. So that, that to me is, is a bit annoying. Also, uh, the system tray options down here, which, uh, well, by the way, this is the system tray options. You go down here, you'll see a little Avast logo. It'll spin when it's scanning. It'll stay secure. Um, 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 sorry, it'll stop when it's not. Uh, and then you have a bunch of different options here, basically, to open up the main interface or to do updates and that kind of thing. Uh, what I do most of the time, because it will yell at you a lot to say that it found something or that it finished a scan or that it finished an update, I like to choose on the silent gaming mode so that way it's kind of running in the background so that we don't have to always know what it's doing. Uh, some people like to have that reassurance that it's working, so you know they'll leave that off. Um, but, uh, but personally, I like to have silent mode on, so that way the only time it'll alert me is when it actually finds something that's wrong. 
Uh, now, it is going to pop up and alert you when something is wrong, so Alamo will not turn off those notifications. But it will turn off all the other notifications for upgrades and that kind of thing. So anyway, that's it for Avast. Uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to um, ask them or, again, post down at the bottom. If you uh, also post down at the bottom of what you want to see next for us to talk about when it comes to antivirus programs on High Tech Guys here. Um, and also feel free to like this video if you did like it. If you didn't like it, if you thought it sucked, go ahead and dislike it. Um, but in any case, leave comments down below and subscribe to our channel so that way we can give you more content and show you what we have to offer. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.